The German army is preparing to destroy the Crimean bridge. There are discussions in the Bundeswehr. The issue of discussion of an attack on the Crimean bridge by high-ranking German officers will be reviewed at the nearest Russian State Duma meeting, Speaker Vyacheslav Volodin said on his Telegram channel. The Duma Speaker also considers it right to send a demand for an investigation to the Bundestag. According to Volodin, the fact of publication of the conversation obliges the German leadership to provide an explanation. Previously, RT editor-in-chief Margarita Simonian said that on the day when Scholz announced that NATO is neither involved nor will be involved in the Ukrainian conflict, high-ranking German officers discussed an option to attack the Crimean bridge without consequences for German authorities. According to Simonian, an audio recording proves it. Something very interesting was given to me by comrades in uniform just on the day when German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that NATO is not and will not be involved in the Ukrainian conflict. Such fascinating reading and audio that I want to publish. To please subscribers, in this interesting recording, high-ranking officers of the Bundeswehr discuss how they will bomb the Crimean bridge and how would they do it so much better that, at the same time, their Schultz could continue to say that his hut is on the edge. According to her, in the 40-minute audio recording, Bundeswehr officers mention both the US and the British military casually discussing that these have been directly involved in the conflict for a long time. Simonian added that she had made an official journalistic request to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Ambassador of Germany as well as to Scholz personally. What is this supposed to mean? Isn't it time for Russia to actively remind Germany now how the explosions of the Russian bridge ended for Germany last time? I would like to see the answer, as is customary in all requests, from your media by lunch today. Otherwise, you never know what tomorrow is, Simonian concluded. Ukrainian guerrillas find out S-400 air defense system coordinates in Moscow. The Ukrainian guerrillas reconnoitred the base of the Russian occupier's military unit and discovered the deployment of an air defense unit in the Timiryazovsky district of Moscow. It is the S-400 Triumph air defense system, according to the Atesh guerrilla movement. Deployed launchers in the amount of 12 units, radar stations and universal towers for them were found. Presumably, these are S-400 Triumph air defense systems, the statement says. According to Atesh, the Russians continue to keep such valuable complexes in the deep rear of Moscow while they are critically lacking at the front. They serve to cover control points of strategic importance, the guerrillas said. At the end of January 2024, the Institute for the Study of War reported that the Russian Federation would re-equip elements of its air defense system in the deep rear due to regular attacks by Ukrainian drones. In some areas, there were interruptions in 4G communications. In particular, since last year, Russia has begun to actively strengthen air defense around Moscow and even installed new air defense systems. Assessing the state of Russia's air defense, the defense intelligence of Ukraine said that during the war, Russia had moved air defense systems from the Far East and the northern region to Moscow and temporarily occupied Crimea. In addition, the Russian invaders built a factory in Moscow where they planned to launch the production of air defense missiles. British soldiers in Ukraine helping fire missiles, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz reveals. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has come under fire from the UK after he suggested that there were British troops operating in the Ukraine conflict. Olaf Scholz said that he would not deliver the long-range Taurus missiles, Berlin's equivalent of a storm shadow, as it would require soldiers assisting on the ground, citing the UK and French approach with their own systems. Scholz argued that following the UK would make Germany a participant in the war. The comments were seen as endangering British military and diplomatic personnel on the ground. Scholz went on to say that Taurus is a very long-range weapon, and what was done on the part of the British and French in terms of target control and target control assistance can't be done in Germany. Commenting on Scholz's remark, Tobias Elwood, the former chair of the British Commons Defence Committee, said it was a flagrant abuse of intelligence deliberately designed to distract from Germany's reluctance to arm Ukraine with its own long-range missile system, as quoted by The Telegram. 
The British lawmaker was also sure that the statement would be used by Russia to ratchet up the escalator ladder. German soldiers can, at no point and in no place, be linked with the targets that this system reaches, Scholz insisted, even if operating from German soil, according to the DPA news agency. The German chancellor stated that it would be not very responsible for his country to risk becoming a party to the war. Meanwhile, the Financial Times quoted an anonymous senior European defense official as saying that everyone knows that there are Western special forces in Ukraine. They've just not acknowledged it officially.